But yeah. is that why the Pope had to call for a new world order, because he can envision something like this happening? I don't know, but uh, Popes have been calling for a new world order for a long time. Right. And so um, I think uh, all religions should stay out of uh, the running of national uh, economies and and politics, because I don't think directly, ecclesiastically, uh, it's any of their business. Now, uh, let me bring up a couple of uh, – oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were still with us, March. Go ahead. Oh, um, what do you, is there – okay, um, kind of sidestep and everything that we're talking about. What is about those submarines off the coast of America, the Russian submarines? Is there anything to that, you think? Uh, they just let America know that they're not without uh, ability still. It's okay for them to run their you know, submarines all over the place, and they're – and their planes, as long as they're not violating other people's laws, which they're not. I mean, let's reverse that thing. Uh, why do the United States want to put uh, missiles in Poland and radar in, in the Czech Republic? And why are they uh, essentially overthrowing governments in Eastern Europe? Good question, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I just, I, there was I mean, the Russians aren't the bad guys, from what I can see, and and I, and I made my life for several years spying on them and uh, uh -huh. and so I know lots about them and so right now they're not the bad guys the people who are running the new world order are from Europe and the United States right okay I mean yeah, they right. they have yeah, their own group of people that. I'm sure well we we don't know that right uh, we can assume that but uh, we don't know that because uh, they don't give that kind of information out and the Russians all. are very bright people, and uh, the KGB uh, was a very, very good organization, as is the FSB. And I, I know I worked against them. And we had the best of the best, and so didn't they. And uh, we went head-to-head -head all the time. All right, anything else for us, Marge? Because uh, if not, I want to go through uh, some rapid-fire questions here before Bob leaves us. No, no go ahead. I'll, I'll get off. Thank you. All right. That's it. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, all right, go ahead. Thank you, Marge. Well, she asked me a different question uh, in the chat room before she came on. Uh, she wanted to know what you felt personally about Obama's birth certificate, if you care to answer anything on that. I know that's a uh, possibly a convoluted question there because we, we really haven't seen the documents. Well, it's very simple. Uh, the conclusion is if he wants to stop all this uh, uh, talk about it that's going on, all he has to do is uh, – you know, pull out the uh, drawer in his bureau and uh, reach underneath the sweaters and pull out his birth certificate <laughs> and uh, and uh, and show it to the entire world. I mean, the right. whole thing is ridiculous. If you're logical and you back into it, you find that the guy was born in Kenya. It's as simple as that. How do I know that? His grandmother said he was born there. She was she was there at the delivery. Uh, the head of Kenya said, "Yes, he is a Kenyan." He's he's from Kenya, and uh, so uh, do you need a lot, a lot, a lot more proof than that? And so uh, this is a terrible burden. It's really hurting his trust and cap uh, uh, and confidence within the uh, the United States. Uh, it keeps gnawing at him like uh, a rat, and uh, it, it's terrible for him. And yet they refuse right. to answer. I mean, they got to be suicidal politically because sooner or later it's going to destroy him. Oh, I know, and I don't know how he's going to last four years with uh, with this constant just uh, battle about the, about something as simple as a birth certificate. And, and 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 you put it right, something as simple as, and if he was an American citizen, he would have told us long ago. Right. So there is a problem. And uh, uh, he's very charismatic. He reads the teleprompter very well. And uh, he makes no decisions whatsoever. They're all made by the uh, policy wonks from mm -hmm. the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberger Group, and the Illuminati. That's right. who he takes his orders from, just like George Bush did. Right, just like Clinton did, just like Jimmy Carter did, just like the first Bush did, and so on. That's right. Now, uh, someone else uh, in the chat room wanted to ask, and I'll bring up Chad from uh, from Kentucky, had a two-part question. 
Now, does Obama need the Obamacare to pass for the socialism to continue? Because if it fails, does that mean that his presidency is stalled? Yeah, I think he will get stalled. And if cap-and-trade is uh, defeated as well, uh, he's going to be wobbling around. Uh, uh, and I think the following election is going to be uh election in which the Democrats will probably – uh, lose seats and maybe even lose power in one of the houses. And, uh, but that's not really significant. Uh, the politics are just a facade. It's a game. Right. Of smoke and mirrors because both parties are controlled by the same group of people and have been for a long time. And you don't get to run at all un- unless you're controlled by them. And, uh, it's as simple as that. Now, let me uh, go through. I think we only have like time for me to ask you one or two more questions before we have to wrap it up. Uh, but the, uh, you're familiar with the California drought situation in, in central California where the farming area has basically turned into a ghost town mm-hmm. because they, they said a minnow has the right to live. Can you, uh, can you expand on More that insanity. and how that's going to affect food prices? It's more insanity, and, and, and it's going to make them go up. And California and the Southwest has a a terrible uh, uh, water problem. Uh, I, I talked to somebody today in uh, San Diego, and, and water and electric is a thousand dollars a month. And I said, "Well, why is it so high? Is the electricity, uh, you know, super expensive?" He said, "That's that's three hundred dollars. It's seven hundred dollars for the water, just for the house." Wow. And so it's becoming a critical problem, and uh, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. And living in the Southwest, you're taking on uh, some some big responsibilities because it could be that uh, uh, maybe they might get in a position where they don't have enough water. Right. In places yeah. like Phoenix and, and Las Vegas and Southern California would dry up. I mean, if you don't right. have any water, you'd have a mass exodus. Right. So let me ask you here in closing, uh, Mr. Chapman, is there anything else that you want to cover? You want me to uh, you want to plug the international forecaster one more time in case we had a revolving yeah, door I'll, in the chat room? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll talk about the um, forecaster again. And I think we've covered everything uh, important or some of the more important things. And I can always come back. I am pretty good right. about scheduling everybody. Uh, the forecast is about business, finance, economic, social, political issues all over the world. And we publish by email on Wednesdays and Saturdays about 35 or 40 pages each time. Have a hard copy for those who are not on the Internet. And that goes out twice a month. And if you'd like a free introdu- introductory copy, you can go to the international forecaster.com. The international f o r e c a s t e r dot com you can use the email b o b at i n t f o r e c a s t e r dot com that's bob at intforecaster dot com or you can call toll free eight hundred three seven five four one eight eight that's eight hundred Three seven five four one eight eight. All right, Bob. It's uh, it's definitely been a pleasure, and thank you for sharing some groundbreaking information with us. And and hopefully we'll have you on in a month or two again. And uh, unless something else important happens to come on, and uh, and we get you before somebody else does, I suppose. I always get plenty of time. Because uh, well, well, let me try to explain Bob's day for everybody here. And and they were asking why doesn't Bob have his own show? Uh, he does five or six interviews a, a, a day easily, uh, and I'm sure you probably spend more than 40 hours a week doing interviews. About 30. Okay, well, close enough. I mean, but that's I a write a publication job, twice a week too. Right. So, you know, I get up at 3:30. I go to sleep around 9 or 9:30, and that's it. <laughs> so we're the we're the last thing that that Bob's doing tonight before he goes to bed. You better believe it. All right, Bob, we'll go get some sleep and, uh, and start writing some, uh, some of the next issues, International Forecaster, for us. I'm, we much appreciate you having you here on the Proof Negative Show. 
Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Have a good night.